It's 5 a.m. I just woke up. Well, I actually woke up at 4.50. Sometimes I wake up and I, and I have to consider whether I should get up or go back to sleep. Should I try to squeeze out another hour, another hour and a half? Sometimes I wake up at 3. and That's easy. I just try again, but I often just lay, lay in bed trying to get to sleep and eventually my thinking turns into a dream. I'm dreaming a lot recently. Vivid vivid dreams. I dreamt about Chuck Grassley the other day. I don't even know who Chuck Grassley is, except he's a politician of some sort. I have these vivid dreams about photography books and songs that I wrote and things that I'm writing in my dreams. I've been writing in my dreams. I've been writing music in my dreams. It's bizarre. Um, i got this new camera. It's a uh, 5G. Uh, 5H, no, no, GH5, sorry. GH5, and it's really good. Look at that. Quality's really good. That's the kit lens from the GH4 that I never used. It's been sitting in the box for years. Anyway, I woke up this morning, 4.55, <laughs> and I had a wonderful email from a viewer who's worried about me because I haven't made a, made a video. Kiki! Kiki Lang! And I gotta tell you, it really made me smile. Um, so I'm going to share my morning with you and some thoughts. By the way, this is a laundry vlog, which is a long ass vlog about nothing really. Um, like a Seinfeld, but less funny. This is my coffee maker. I love it. It's a Cuisinart. It costs, uh, you can get a, about 150 bucks. I got this one on sale at Costco. Check that out. I already prepared it. Pulled up the water. You can see the water on the side there. It's very noisy in the morning. It takes about 30 seconds. And now the beautiful sound of percolating coffee. One of the great things, my, my wife broke broke the pot on the last uh, coffee maker after we had it over 10 years, so I didn't really care too much. It's one we got for our wedding, uh, yeah, for our marriage, our wedding ceremony? I don't know. Our, when we got married, it was a, yeah, a wedding present, that's what it was. <laughs> my brain's not working. And she broke the metal pot, and then we got this one. This one, of course, you can see it's a metal pot. She broke the, the, the glass pot. And um, it's unbreakable, of course. And on top of that, this thing stays hot for more than a day. It'll be hot all day. Like the next day, I can, I'll be able to serve from this, and it'll still be hot coffee. This is uh, yesterday's coffee. It's old. Because it's yesterday's coffee. That's why it's old. You hear that? And it's vanilla. That's why it's kind of shiny. Can you guys tell that's vanilla? It's, it looks different from the other coffee. Vanilla coffee looks different. Anyway, I'm going to get dressed and talk to you guys a little bit after I have a little coffee. Well, it's 5.50 now. My family's still sleeping. Uh, this is a plot of land in front of my house. You can't really see it because it's so goddamn dark, but uh, It's about twice the size of my house this plot of land. It used to be a park and I wanted to buy it, but the minimum uh, the the bottom sales the, it's a, it's they're auctioning it off in two months So the bottom bid is 51 million yen. Is that right? Yeah uh, 794 thousand six hundred yen so which is approximately um, minimum of about four hundred fifty thousand dollars and again that's the bottom bid so it's so dark it's gonna be hard to narrate but the point is listening to my voice right <clears throat> anyway remember that plot and remember this apartment and I'll tell you a 
some stories that have been on my mind recently. We'll walk back the other way just because there's other stories to tell. So in that plot of land, this plot of land used to be a park that Maggie and my wife and I used to visit. So Maggie could poop in it. It was a children's park. It had children's swing sets and, and uh, you know, things like that. Bars and you know, things that kids could play on, monkey bars and crap. Anyway, uh, across the street from that park was a plot of land. And it said, we're building a house here. It was a sign. It said, we're building a house. If you want this house, come call us. And I, I called. Thinking, thinking, expecting I would be met with resistance because I'm a foreigner, but they were super accommodating and happy. And there's another dilapidated house falling apart. These houses are just, they're waiting because the prices are going up here, so the owners are waiting to sell. Like this plot of land where a woman used to live, but she died. Burned in a fire, died in her own bathtub. Anyway, that plot of land, back to that. <laughs> Recently, someone's been walking by, so... Oh, I'll go back, go back too fast, too fast. So about about a year and a half ago or so, they they went around the neighborhood and they asked everyone, "Do you want to keep this park or do you want to sell it?" And it was it was from the government, right? The government said, "Do you want to keep this? Do you want to keep this or do you want to sell it?" And uh, I wanted to keep it because it's a park <sighs> and good for the kids and stuff. And the kids would sometimes swing in it. But most of the neighborhood said, no, let's just go ahead and sell it. Because it's, it's the responsibility of the neighborhood to keep it up and clean it up on the weekends and stuff. And, and I guess, you know, nobody wanted to do it. That used to be a pachinko parlor. So, uh, no one's out. Anyway, they, they, they took out all the kids' swing sets and crap. And it became overgrown with weeds. And they finally put up a sign saying they're going to auction it off. And I was hoping, well, maybe I'll buy it, you know. But, it's too expensive. But in the last few months, someone has been coming by and, uh, throw <laughs> and throwing their dog's poop in that, <laughs> in that plot of land that is for sale. And it's kind of weird because they wrap the poop up in plastic. And you know those little dog, you know, if you walk around and you, your dog poops, you put it in plastic. and. And they actually collect the dog's poop, and then they put it in plastic, and then they throw it in, in the goddamn plot of land. It's bizarre. It's like, why would you bother putting it in plastic? Just let the dog poop them, right? So I went in there the other day and collected seven bags of garbage of ball poop. And now my mission is to find that villain. <laughs> anyway. I sometimes go to the gym at this time of the night and and as you can see it's actually a little more busier than usual. I'm seeing more people. Sometimes I won't see anybody at all. And it makes you, I, I kind of think about uh, the streets as a kind of river. And people are in their houses sleeping and then when they want to join the river they think they walk out into the street. But there's always someone out there, you know, no matter how early you get up. There's always someone who's in the river before you. I don't know. You can never, you can never be the first one in the river, right? There's always someone right before you. A little bit like life. It's a metaphor. Anyway. Some of the things that have been on my mind recently. Recently I've been getting a, a root canal done. And one of the things you may, you may have heard of about Japan is that the health costs uh, are very, very low because you go, well, that's not really true. Because, okay, every month I pay about 600 bucks in health insurance and health co in national health care, right? And that covers my whole family. My wife's also got a separate thing through, through her company, but we're pretty much covered. She got an MRI. She's been having headaches recently. She got an MRI the other day and it uh, cost her 80 bucks less than 80 bucks 70 bucks I think in the States it costs like a thousand up to a thousand two thousand depending where you are it's pretty affordable going to the dentist getting a root canal every visit is very cheap literally anywhere from 250 yen some sometimes once it was like 120 yen was for cleaning or something I don't remember but 
The most I've ever paid is thirty is uh maybe three thousand yen, about thirty dollars. Uh, but the, the downside of this is that for some bizarre reason dentists will not do uh, will not take care of you in one visit. This is a great one to get your place right here. I love this place. They won't take care of you in one visit. You've got to go back like, time and time again. And I've been, they've been treating my root canal, and this is the bizarrest part of the story, on my wisdom tooth, which I figured they would just pull, right? I'm like, just pull the goddamn thing. They're like, no, for some reason, he goes, he sees an, he's a dentist my, that my kids go to, so I'm just easier to go there, because I'm going, I gotta take my kids there anyway, so. He's been treating it, he's this old guy, but he's, he's, he's nice, he doesn't bother me too much. Uh, the dentist I used to go talk way too much, bug, bug me too, a long time ago. Then I got another dentist who's cold as ice. This guy's right in, in between. Kind of friendly, really friendly to my kids. But he, it's taken him forever to treat. This is where the Shinkansen goes by. It's taking him forever to treat my tooth. I'm just bringing you here to see this. Two visits ago, he said, Oh, we're 25% done. And I'm like, What? Only 25%? And I went there again Monday. Today's uh, Thursday, by the way. And he said, Okay, we're about 50, a little over 50%. <laughs> it's kind of funny. I, I kind of put up with it just out of curiosity, just to see, see how far he'll go, how long it's going to take. This is the gym I go to. Anytime gym, it's open 24 hours a day. And uh, I'm gonna go in there right now. Depending on the gym, you can go in there with your shoes on or change your shoes. I usually change my shoes, but not today because I'm just gonna go in there and stretch, just hang on a bar and stretch my body out. And we'll get back to this long ass video. So I've got the mic clipped on now. I'll take you guys around a little bit. Kind of dark now, still. I just went to the gym and stretched a little bit. <clears throat> There's a woman who lives in this house who used to yell at me because I'd walk my dog near her house. This neighborhood has changed a lot and I really enjoy watching it change. Um, so this is a GH5, by the way, with uh, in-camera stabilization. It's much nicer. This is a huge house that also was built in the last few years. Huge in Japan, probably average in America, I don't know. Um, a lot of things on my mind recently. I've been dreaming vividly recently, as I told you in the beginning of the video, about strange things. Writing in my dreams, I wake up having written something or singing a song that I wrote. So bizarre. This apartment, this also used to be one house and this, the guy who uh, owned it tore it down and built this, this complex, uh, apartment complex. Each apartment it goes for 150,000 yen, which is pretty expensive, about $1,300. Um, <clears throat> and he lives in the back too, so he's always there. It's really nice, as you can see, I'll, I'll take you through. I was here when they <coughs> started building it. I came to the uh, ceremony. That's really nice. Look at that. Got parking in there. This all used to be one house. Now it's like 15 apartments. It's a lot of money coming in here. And he's in the back somewhere in one of these. Yeah, the three stories over here. Here's the moon. Um, 
So I got an email this morning <laughs> from Kiki Lang telling me about how I, one men I once mentioned I have very few friends, only casual acquaintances. It's so quiet here. There's a hospital down there, the Meitetsu Bioin. Oh, these are the. It must be can day today, so and the neighborhood takes turns. Can't really see them. See the old people there? The recyclables and stuff. Gozaimasu. Um. A man stopped me and said, what are, you, what are you doing there? <laughs> Very friendly. I said, oh, I just got a new camera, just testing it out. He said, oh, let's see. Okay, nice camera. Walked off. I think people would be afraid to approach you in other countries, I don't know. Sun's finally coming up, that's nice. There's a little shrine down here. <clears throat> Tomaru. Like I didn't stop at all. <laughs> It says tomato right there, buddy. Anyway, um, yeah, so Kiki Lang was talking about how there's, he has, how about I have very few friends. And it's kind of true. Uh, I've pushed a lot of people away from my life because I thought they were just wasting it. The man who used to live next to that park that I showed you earlier, that they're selling. The man who, who used to live next to it, <clears throat> he, uh, he used to take care of this shrine. He'd walk all the way over here every morning and just clean it up, take care of it. You know, there's only, if anyone left any garbage, he'd clean it up, tidy it up. But he died, a, he died about a, a year and a half ago. He was really old, like, uh, must have been over 80. And he'd sit on the bench in that park and he'd ask me the same questions over and over. The Shinkansen just passed. He'd ask me the same questions over and over like, what's your dog's name? Is it a boy or a girl? And he once showed me his calligraphy. Anyway, about uh, six months ago or so, when the city came to put the sign up in front of that, the luggage there. The city came to put a sign up there to, you know, to announce they were selling the land. A man was there who looked, was a spitting image of this guy, also very old, and I realized it must be his son. So I asked him, are you Mr. Blah Blah's son? He said, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm sure it's the same name, right? And he said, yeah. I said, oh, I knew your father. Uh, and he was very friendly. Um, and, I, and I have a picture on my computer that I found. I was scrolling through my computer and I found a picture of his father in, in a uh, kimono. Well, not a kimono, yukata. And I said, you know, I got a great picture of your father wearing a yukata. I'll print it out and give it to your mom. Because his mom, his, uh, the old man's, the old man's dead, I mean, uh, the dead man's, the widow. <laughs> God, what's wrong with my God? I'm okay. The widow still lives there. You can hear the crows. Yeah, so this ca camera does not focus very well at night, but you can see. I'm taking you guys just these old back roads. What the hell is that? That's a little bird. What are you doing, little bird? <clears throat> anyway, as I was saying, I don't really have a lot of friends. Because um, I'm trying to improve my life, and I, I feel like some people have been holding me back because being too negative or we're not really moving forward, so and I've been uh, concentrating on just living my life well recently. Uh, which is not easy because, as you know, I'm a, I'm a functional alcoholic. Uh, so I quit, I quit drinking for a long time, but <laughs> my wife, she, she came home with a, a case of uh, strong zeros. I don't, I don't really... I think she understands that. I, I wouldn't mind if she never bought alcohol again. 
So I told her, I said, and, and our, and our um, her, her aunt, little garden there, her aunt gave us a whole bunch of cases of beer for Christmas, well, for the end of the year. I told her, just tell your aunt not to give us any more. Yeah, I'd quit drinking for like almost a month, and then I started up again with her. She likes to drink. And I quit for 10 days again, and then she brought the case home. But uh, recently I've been, uh, she's, uh, she's been working late, really late, so I've been doing my best to come home early and pick up the kids, you know, arranging my classes at school so, so I can uh, find time in, in the uh, automatic lights there, find time to pick up the kids from school, which is not too late. This is Calato Road, one of my favorite roads. Yeah, as you can see it, it does not focus well at night, huh? Go. This is not a good lens for the night. This is a little tiny road that goes in between, like a little alley. I've taken you through on this road many, many times in the past. But the other thing about friendship, it's I'm a little, I guess, should I say embarrassed to say, but it's just simply true. A lot of people I've tried to be friends with just haven't had the interest in being friends with me. Uh, a lot of people I've met here on YouTube, who I thought, you know, hey, we have a lot in common, let's, let's be friends kind of thing. They, uh, they haven't seemed that interested, or, you know, distance or other interests. People that I thought, you know, well, long story short, very few friends in my life. But I'm not uh, lonely. I, uh, <laughs> I mean, it sounds, almost sounds like I'm whining, but I'm quite happy being alone. Uh, <clears throat> I think it might be unhealthy, <laughs> if anything. Like, maybe I should make more of an effort. But I'm quite happy uh, being alone. I do, you know, occasionally go out. A guy died, uh, Jesus, horrible, horrible focus here. Let me see, I'm going to put this on manual. Let's do this, let's turn this to manual. How about that? Where's the manual, goddamn, oh, here we go. Where's the manual on this? Just a minute. So you're not going to believe this, but I have no idea where the manual button is on this goddamn thing. It's the, um, it's the kit lens that came with the camera, right? So, I think it's, uh, I don't see any manual button on this thing. Look at the zoom on this, it's pretty good, huh? But it's not focusing. Oh, there we go. There we go, okay, see? But it takes a long time. Okay, well, when I go home, I'll look, look up the instructions here. Uh, yeah, and I've, I've, uh, I guess I'm, I guess I'm kind of a, a dick. <laughs> That's the only thing I can uh, logically assume is why I don't have a lot of friends. But um, but you know I <laughs> can't be that much of a dick. My kids seem to like me. And my wife likes me. My wife still likes me quite a bit, actually. Hubba hubba, uh, which is good. I'm, I'm, I'm quite happy. And yeah, and, and this uh, Friday, this Friday, my son has the day off. Well, no school. I mean the day off. That's school. He has no school, right? So, my wife said, I want you to take him to that uh, dinosaur exhibit down at the uh, science museum. So I said, okay, you know, because I got, I, got I got Friday off. He just has no school. Little Amelie, so we told Amelie's uh, teacher, I said, we're going to uh, take Amelie out of school. On, she's in kindergarten or nursery school. And... Uh, so the teacher said, oh, are you sure, Friday? Because that's when Santa's coming. And I was like, oh my God, I gotta see Santa. So, uh, okay, okay, she can stay, she can go on Friday. So I, we'll take her to school on Friday and I'll take my son to the exhibit. So I asked my son yesterday, I said, hey, so you wanna, you wanna invite a friend? Maybe, he, you know, he's got a lot of friends. He's pretty popular, my kid. All the kids are always, bye, Victor, bye, Victor. 
he, he kind of, I think he's kind of shy about the female attention. Kind of ignores the girls, what they really like in those crowd around him. Uh, just like his old man. Anyway, um, I asked my son, do you want to invite somebody? And well, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll talk to the kids' parents. And I'll, t I'll take them both if they want. And he said, no, just you and me is fine. Just the two of us. Well, that was nice. Let's take a picture here. Okay. But um, that's one thing that happened recently. Another thing that happened that I was quite impressed with that made me think that that uh, Japan is just so much better than America is the service that's been that we get here is so much better. And let me explain that. So Saturday night we were watching something, some Netflix with the kids until about 10 p.m. Let them stay up late Saturdays, right? And uh, went to bed, woke up at 3 a.m. to uh, take a leak and uh, noticed the internet was out, right? So I checked the, the internet and it was dead. And I turned off the router and turned it on again. It was dead. Someone took all the decorations that used to be here. Huh. Anyway, we called the internet company the next day. And uh, they said, okay, we'll come out. So they came out. So we called on Sunday, of course. And they came out on Monday. They said, they said, we'll be there at between 2 and 3, but they came at 1.30. Anyway, the guy came, came in, fixed the router, apparently a little, the, the, I don't know if you noticed, it's a, it's a uh, fiber optic, so it's literally just a string, like a thread, like a tiny thread. And it had snapped. I mean, the router's really old, over 10 years old, I think. So he goes, oh, no problem. So he, he went into the router, reconnected the, the uh, thread, uh, tested it. Okay, works fine. I was about to leave and I said, you know, we've got the one gigabyte plan. Should I go up to five gigabyte, got gigabyte or 10 gigabyte? Because I know they sell these other plans, right? You pay a little more. And because of YouTube and stuff. Although I haven't been doing it recently. And you know, Netflix and all that crap. Uh, I thought maybe it's something I should move up to. And he said, we got this new campaign. It's called the, uh, it's the Komufa Mesh Wi-Fi plan where they just put another router extension thing majiggy in your house and it just expands the power a little bit and it's about eight hundred eight dollars more a month and he's like I can get a guy out here and you can you can test it for free for two uh for two months so he was only there for 10 minutes but he makes a phone call he goes okay uh, the guy can be here in uh in an, in two hours is that okay i said sure i i happen to have a day off which is really rare on a monday so about an hour later, much uh, just like the, the first guy, much earlier than expected, he comes. He says, well, but first let's test out the uh, internet. So he, before, you know, hooking up anything, he tests out my internet and he says, this is unstable. Something's wrong. Long story short, he switches out the router, tests it again. I have lightning fast the internet now in, com in the house and in, on my main computer. It's like 850 or something megabytes up, uh, download per second, which is, I think, pretty fast. And uh, he says, you don't need the other one. You don't need the upgrade. You don't need to pay anymore. So the whole day took, took, took some time, but ended up not paying anything. And I thought, wow, I mean, Jesus, this, this problem was solved so quickly and so cordially. The guy came in, sprayed, you know, with his own slippers and sprayed his hands, you know, disinfected himself because of Corona. And it was very polite. Gave me his, both of the guys gave me their meshes. <laughs> They're very nice, very nice guys. The second guy had four kids, which is really rare in Japan. Uh, and um, this is not friendship, of course, but it makes me think. One thing I th I've often considered or theorized is that, although friend, it's it's important to have good friends, I suppose, but just having in human interaction, I think, is uh, it's often enough. There used to be a, t um, a dragon fountain here, but they took it away, I think, to prevent people from ripping it off. Now it's much lighter now.
this camera's picking up much better. Maybe it'll focus better now. Anyway, um, that was one thing, right? Then the next bizarre thing, I was uh, near Nagoya Station coming home and uh, I'd stopped my bike, bike for something, convenience store or something, and I got back on and I guess the kickstand didn't go all the way up. So when I was riding my bicycle, the kickstand hit the curb and snapped off and just fell on the street, fell on the street, which is bizarre because it's, it's, uh, it's aluminum, right? It's like thick aluminum and <laughs> just cracked right off. So I picked it up and I happened to be fairly near to the bike store where I bought the thing and it's only 10 months ago or so. So I went in there and I thought I'll just get another one and I checked, but I said, I, it was just so bizarre that I checked the, um, I checked the same kickstand that they had on, on sale there. It's about three, it's about 30 bucks, you know, kind of a high-end kickstand. And it said 30, 30 day money back guarantee on it. And uh, I talked to the guy, I said, look at this, this thing just cracked right off. Isn't that, isn't that bizarre? I said, I was going to ask if you could just replace it because I thought it might be under warranty because you know, the bike is less than a year old. But it's only a 30 day warranty. He said, wait a minute. He said, wait, wait, wait. Let me, uh, let me call the manufacturer because I've never heard of this before. So I said, okay. The next day, he calls me. He says, they, they're going to send over a new kickstand. So come on in and we'll, we'll, we'll replace it. <laughs> but the funny, uh, the funny waste of time thing that happened after that was I had no kickstand right for the day, so I went home and I jerry-rigged a kickstand, which I'll show you here. I'll put a picture up. It's just ridiculous, right? I uh, I had a, we we had a laundry, an indoor laundry uh, stand in the house that had broken, but I took a couple of the pipes off just to keep it in the attic on the third floor. It's kind of an attic just in case, you know, we ever needed it. And it turns out I could use it for this particular thing. What is this? A fruit of some sort. What is that? A lemon or something. What is that? It's kind of fruit. It must have fallen off a tree somewhere. I don't know where though. No, nope, no trees around here. Just a fruit sitting in a parking lot. Anyway, the uh, Again, the, the service in Japan, very nice, very good. Everyone's very polite. A lot of people complain about Japan being racist and everything, but I really haven't had much, too much of a problem here. Everyone's friendly in, in the neighborhood, everyone says hello. So, uh, although I don't really have uh, good friends, I'm quite content. Anyway, I do think about things though. Things kind of bother me a little bit, worry, worry me a little bit. Not too much, just a little bit, tiny bit. Like my psychology. I saw that another, I talked about this before, another YouTuber was, uh, she had, uh, she got pregnant. And uh, this YouTuber, by the way, does not does not like me at all. Well, maybe maybe she maybe she, I'm sure she doesn't even think about me. But thinking about other thinking about other people thinking about you is kind of a waste of time because most people have no interest <laughs> in you at all. They, they got their own lives. But um, yeah, she doesn't like me, and I never understood, really understood why. But I didn't think too much about it. It's been many many years since uh, we had our little falling out but she got pregnant and she had a, a condition where she was carrying basically a, a, a child that was uh, destined to be born either dead or to die soon afterwards and um, I thought that that's the and it did she, the, the baby was born and died the same day so she gave birth and had a, and buried it, her, her child on the same day and I, you know and I only, uh, I only had negative feelings towards this person because she had, she really did not like me, and I, you know, when someone doesn't like you that much, you're like, well, screw you, I don't like you either. <laughs> but, um, but I thought that was just about the saddest thing I'd ever heard. You know, having a, 
<laughs> carrying, a, carrying a child for nine months. And you know, everyone must come up to you and say, hey, congratulations. Congratulations on your child. Well, that's a cool looking motorcycle. Bad segue, but that is a really cool looking motorcycle. Everyone must congratulate you on your child and you know, on being pregnant and want to touch your tummy and everything. And how do you deal with that? Do you tell them? Oh, I'm just, I have to carry the... Yeah, because the thing about this woman's situation was when I think by the time she found out... I don't know the details of all this, but this might be... But I'm sure it's true for somebody with this condition. But by the time she found out, she couldn't get an abortion. Or maybe she decided to carry through. And I, I heard about someone else, some major politician, uh, some kind of fairly famous politician had the same situation where she decided to carry the child uh, to term. And I think she ended up donating like parts of the child's, uh, you know, some of the child's organs to other children and ended up helping some people. But it still must be just a heartbreaking, heartbreaking experience to, to, uh, carry it to, you know, be pregnant and carry a child and everyone that you meet on the street, all the strangers who don't know your story must congratulate you and, and all you can say is uh, thank you. I mean, I, I doubt you're going to explain that to everybody, everyone you meet. Don't congratulate me, this baby's going to die as soon as it's born. That's just, I just felt so bad for this person. Uh, or anybody who has, a, has to go through something, through something like that. There's a lot of misery in the world. You know, a lot of people have a lot of... I'm really lucky. Of course, unless my wife's MRI turns out to be something serious. And then I'm going to have my own tragedy, but... <sighs> anyway. So that's what's uh, been on my mind recently. Oh yeah, what bothered me about this... this <laughs> you know what bothered me about my... Uh, my, my um, I guess sympathy or towards this wo woman is I wondered why I cared. <laughs> kind of bothered me that I cared. Like I feel like um, I wanted this, uh, even though she doesn't even know I'm thinking about her. I felt like I wanted to reach out and, you know, show my sympathies in some way. I felt like it was weak of me to want her approval in any way. It's not that I want her approval, because... Well, see, that's the thing. Like, I, I feel like uh, it's weak of me to care. But, but like Keanu Reeves says, I, I don't want to live in a world where weakness is seen as a... I mean, uh, being kind to people is seen as a weakness, so... Maybe, maybe that's just me second-guessing my own goodness. I can't be that good, right? Because I don't have any friends, so... <laughs> anyway. So I'm going to get back to uh, improving my life, living my life well. And hopefully sharing some of this with you guys on video. A little bit more than I have in the past. Oh, I do have had some really bad setbacks with these. With recent... This is one reason I bought this camera, actually. Was that... Um, I, uh, I, I, I filmed two barbershop videos for my ASMR channel and in both cases, my last camera, one camera froze up so I lost all the main footage of it and the other one, the other, sh uh, the other attempt, the sound was so bad it was unusable. So that was, uh, that was a heartbreaking waste of my time and money, like it literally took five hours out of my day, six, I know, maybe, yeah, five hours out of my life filming two long ass haircuts. It kind of, it kind of you know, it dis not, not disillusioned me, but made me not want, <laughs> you know, when something fails that bad, you're like, oh God, why do I even bother? So, but I have been filming a lot and I've been on a lot of trips recently and I'm gonna, but I just haven't, haven't had time to edit with the kids and everything. Same old thing. So the sun's up now, and it's what time? 6:46. So 
So my kid's gonna be up in four minutes. They wake up at 6.50. And I'll take them to school. So, that's my story and I'm sticking with it. Anyway, oh yeah, yeah. There's one last, one re other, one more reason I haven't really haven't been making videos. <laughs> it's like, I saw a movie, uh, I saw a TV series, I think it's called True Story or something with that little diminutive uh, black comedian, I forgot his name. Oh my God, the fact that I said he's black means I'm racist. Uh, you know, a little short comedian that always works with The Rock. Anyway, he did a movie and he said, he's, he, in the movie he kind of plays a, fa he plays a famous comedian with an ex-drug problem who kills, ends up killing someone. Anyway, um, but one, one line in the movie said, no one cares what you're going through, they just came for the show. Yeah, so all all these things I've told you about didn't want to, did, I thought, you know, nobody cares. <laughs> nobody cares about this. Nobody wants to hear that. They just want to be entertained. So this wasn't entertaining, but but maybe it'll help Kiki Lang go to sleep because he likes listening to me ramble. And maybe you guys enjoyed the neighborhood walk. Oh, here's that park again. See? Let's see if anyone threw garbage in here today. Nope. That's good. Okay, that's all I got for you. You guys have a great day, a great night. Go to sleep. Oh, there it is. See? God damn it. Oh, it just happened today. This wasn't here this morning. I think. I know it was dark. I couldn't tell. God damn it. Oh, well. I lose. Good morning. Hey. Little Bick, good morning. Hey, good morning. Good morning. Hey, Emily, good morning. Can I carry you down? Who wants, who, wants, who wants me to take him down? Who wants to ride to the first floor? Nobody? Yeah? Yeah? Huh? What do you mean? Okay, I'm taking, I'm going. Yeah. Yeah. Come here. Come on.